Now, what is a document? A document is a point in this space. Right? So if I had a three-dimensional space, for example, a document is a point in this space. It's going to have an X component, it's going to have a Y component, and it's going to have a Z component if this was a three-dimensional space. But in a V-dimensional space, it's going to have V components. Okay, And the values of the components are just these values, these TF-IDF uh, score values. Okay, so the documents are points or vectors in this space. You can think of them either as points here or you can think of them as a vector from the origin in that multidimensional space to that point. Okay, so either you can think of it as this particular point or you can think of it as the vector from the origin up to that point. It's the same thing. And in a typical web search engine, uh, the size of the vocabulary is in tens of millions, right? So the number of dimensions is huge. And again, these are going to be sparse vectors. Why are they going to be sparse vectors? That is, why are most of the entries going to be zero? Because a given document has only, you know, is maybe a typical document is maybe just two or three pages long, whereas the vocabulary itself is tens of millions of terms long. Right? So clearly most of these uh, components are going to be zero for a typical document. Now what we're going to do is imagine every document in the corpus as being mapped in this v-dimensional space. Okay, each of them will be mapped to a different location in this space. Then what we're going to do is we are going to bring the query into this space. Okay, we've brought in all the documents. Now we are going to bring in the query itself. Okay, and how do we do that? We will represent the query itself as a vector in the space. And how, how do we do that? Think of the query itself as a document. Okay, a very, very small document maybe. If you think of the query itself as a document, then the query can also be mapped into the same space. Now if the query is mapped into this space, then we can rank all the documents with re respect to that query by seeing how close the two are in that space. Okay, so we can rank the documents according to their distance from the query or their proximity to the query in this v-dimensional space. Okay, and note that if we do that, then we have, uh, you know, n note that this is n this is very different from a Boolean retrieval model where either a document is matching the query or it's not matching the query. Now you have all the documents in this v-dimensional space at different distances from the query. So you can come up with this global ranking of documents based on increasing distances from the query. So the documents that are ranked, ranked higher will be uh, the ones that are closer to the query in this v-dimensional space. And those are the more relevant documents. So the question is how do we define the distance between a query and a document here? Well, one of the ways to define the distance is to just take the distance, the actual Euclidean distance between the two points, the query point and the document point in this space. Now, the Euclidean distance is actually a bad idea because if you go back to this, these three problems, we have resolved these two problems by coming up with these TF-IDF weights, okay, and representing each document as a vector of TF-IDF weights. But we haven't resolved this problem yet, and that's what you will see when we are looking at the Euclidean distance. Can you please turn off the microphone? Yeah, thank you. So, let's think of Okay, let's, so by the way, 
just as we could think of the dis distance between a query and all the documents, we can also think of distances between documents in the same way. Right? The distance between documents is just given by the diff the Euclidean distance between the two points in this v-dimensional space. Now you can see why the Euclidean distance is a bad idea if you just think of two two example documents. Okay. Let's take an arbitrary document D and let's append that document to itself. Okay, so let's append D to itself and call that as D prime. Now semantically both the documents have the same content. Okay, so we expect them to be very close. In fact, I would say we expect them to basically overlap in the v-dimensional space. But what will be the Euclidean distance between the two documents in this v-dimensional space? It will actually be very large. Why is that? If, if uh, d prime is just d appearing twice, why will the difference between these two be relatively large. Okay, so let's go back to the TF-IDF weights, right? This was the TF-IDF score. Okay, so if one of the documents is just a copy, uh, you know, is, is just two copies of the other document, then every term in appearing in that document, that larger document, will have a term frequency that is twice that of the single document. Right. If you look at these term frequency values for the second document, those they will be double the values of the uh, first document. So that's why they won't actually overlap. Even though they are the same content, they won't actually overlap. But you can intuitively see that if a query is cl close to this document, it should also be labeled as close to this document. So how do we do that? I mean, how do we modify? So basically this Euclidean distance is not a good uh, way to measure the distances because the distances between these two documents could potentially be large. But if you look at the angle between the two documents, the angle between the vectors, okay, recall that we can think of documents as in points or we can think of them as vectors from the origin to that point the angle between the two documents will be exactly zero because one of the documents will just be um, of greater length than the other. Okay, so the angle between the documents will be zero or close to zero. And so instead of looking at Instead of looking at the physical distances between the queries and the documents, we are going to look at the angle between the query and the different documents. Okay, so if a document is a duplicate copy of another document, then their angles are going to correspond with one another and so the query will be equally far from both. That's the idea. I think we are running out of time, so we'll probably continue this in the next lecture, but uh, if you have five minutes, we can you, you can ask questions to clarify your doubts. Basically, what we are going to do is we are going to measure this angle between the query and all the documents in this v-dimensional space, and we are going to say that smaller angles mean closer proximity. Okay, instead of looking at the distances here because the distances are going to depend depend on the lengths of the documents. So one of the ways we are going to normalize the length is by not looking at the lengths of these vectors but the angles between the vectors. We'll look at the details in the next class. Okay, sir.